<laughs> <laughs> so we're here for evening with PodCamp. Uh, my name is Missy. I'm with PodCamp Pittsburgh. I'm also with uh, Sidekick Media Bold Pittsburgh, which Amanda writes for, and Amanda yes. as well. Yes. <laughs> and Bite Me Bakery, which we've got some lovely uh, cupcakes over here from them. So we're here at the beautiful Work Hard Pittsburgh location uh, for, for this night's evening with PodCamp panel. And we're going to be talking with some uh, Etsy shop owners to talk about some of the things that they do with, with their Etsy shops and how they utilize Etsy as a media outlet for their, their crafting and artistry. So I'm going to let the, the panelists introduce themselves. Oh, okay. Oh, you can start whichever one you um, My name is Amanda Narcissi. I uh, run Bold Pittsburgh as my primary, but I also run, I did run up until last year an Etsy store called Epic Epically Curious Art, and um, it was upcycle and photography and screen printing, uh, and as various other hats that I wear. So, and I work with uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh every year and <laughs> various other things. Uh, my name is Amanda Cooney. Uh, I run uh, AEC Designs. Um, got a few, a couple different things up right now. Uh, mostly um, little zipper pouches. I've been working on some, uh, in, um, like jewelry or uh, cookie stands. It's made out of um, old dinner plates that uh, you drill a hole through and then you put the artwork through. Um, and then I've been working on some pillows and I have some prints as well. Karen Dybert, um, who is a French dog on Etsy. I uh, sell dog collars, leashes, bow ties from dogs. Um, I've been on Etsy with a French dog about a year and a half, but I've been with Etsy for just over 10 years selling kid shirts. I closed that uh, last year. Okay. Well, we do have some basic questions that we like to ask. But of course, if there's anything that we kind of trail into along the conversation, we like to have this as a conversational panel type of thing. Uh, so we're just going to be watching the, the Facebook feed to see if we have any questions coming in from the audience. And we can, of course, address those either when they're brought up or during a question and answer period after the fact. But uh, before we get into the questions, I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to our sponsors for tonight's event. Uh, again, we have Sorgatron Media. They're, they're streaming the event for us here at Work Hard Pittsburgh, who is hosting us for space. And again, Invite Me Bakery has, has provided some lovely little dessert options for, for the evening. So again, thanks much to our sponsors because they help us make these things possible. All right, so we'll, we'll jump into the questions if a few ladies are ready for it. Let's do it. Now, Karen, you, you did already start to answer the first question that I had, which is how long have you been an Etsy retailer? And how did you discover Etsy as an option to sell your your products? I discovered Etsy um, when they were about 15 months old. Um, I was looking, I was selling on eBay, um, actually like baby gifts in, in work clothes. And I was looking for another place to sell because if you can sell five, why not sell 10? <laughs> more. more. Sense. Um, and I, I discovered Etsy in Google search. I started out there selling baby items and shortly shifted over to making shirts for kids. Um, and that did very well um, as a hobby there um, because I didn't push it. But that's how I found Etsy was through Google search. Okay. Nice. Uh, I've been on Etsy for um, about five years. I started in 2011. Um, I think I started because I actually bought something on Etsy. I'm like, I could do this. So. Um, that's how I actually opened the, the business and I stopped for a little while, but then I, I started it back up about a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, I would have to say about 2007 or eight, somewhere in there, I, um, had met, I was living in New Hampshire at the time and I had met another, uh, artist who was, um, upcycling clothing. She would take old clothes and turn them into like bow ties and dresses and different things like that. Um, and she introduced me to it. And at the time I was bored, I had a few freelance customers. So I was like, I could probably go on there and sell some paintings or something. And that's how it kind of grew. 
Um, but it kind of ebbed and flowed. Like I would have crafts on there and then I wouldn't, and then I would take it down and not relist anything. So it's been off and on for since that time. Okay. Now, Karen, I know this is a conversation we were having before we got, we got the panel going. Uh, do you use Etsy in combination with other platforms? I do. Instagram okay. is um, it's huge for me. I drive a lot of traffic to my Etsy site from Instagram. Okay. Um, I also have Twitter and, and Facebook account for the business, but basically I'm not on there. Um, I just cross post over from Instagram. I have followers there um, that engage, but um, most of my traffic comes from Instagram. It's been huge. And I think because it's a visual platform. Okay, that, that makes absolute sense. Um, I use Instagram as well. Um, I was promoting on Facebook, but I recently disabled my Facebook and kind of feel the effects of that. So not not as many hits as I used to have than whenever I would promote on Facebook. So that's okay. So that's that's a possible learning point there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. When it was active, Instagram and Twitter was where I saw most of my traction from. Um, so that's where I would, but I moved a lot of my work onto my personal site. So now I see a lot of it going there, which has a shopping cart. So I've actually kind of been able to post both inventories, inventory both places okay. to kind of control two different shopping carts. And it just kind of depends on where people find me at that point. Okay. So much like any other social media platform, it's, you know, you've got your Twitter following, you've got your Facebook following in the circumstance you have your, your Etsy following versus your, or uh, well, more specifically, your, your Twitter, Instagram type of stuff. Okay. Um, now, have you used any other platforms other than Etsy to sell items, you know, like, like eBay or any sort of other sales platforms? Squarespace. Okay. Uh, building a site on Squarespace, it's just very simple to have a e-commerce site on there, um, and you can just upload things, and then literally it's in your bank account the next day, um, kind of thing. Uh, other than that, not too many other people kind of stray from Etsy once they get on there, um, just because it's very user friendly and very nice. So I have never, like I said, I do cross. I have the inventory yeah. on both sites so it kind of just sees it takes a little bit more on the back end to control that but it, again if you google my name my website comes up first not my etsy store so you kind of have to see where your customers lay okay how about you um i've used uh store envy which is something i don't i'm not really sure how long that they've been out but i i bought things off of there before and um i opened up a store maybe about four or five months ago, um, hoping to get more more sales. Um, one thing I do like about them is there's no posting fee, but they do take a percentage, whereas Etsy, you it's a 20% 20, 20 um, posting fee, and there's no um, percentage taken, like no commission or anything like that. So, But um, I haven't really gotten a lot of traffic on there. I did the first week that I was on, but at this point, it's minimal. Okay. And again, I know you had talked about eBay in addition to the, to the Etsy. So what sort of difference between platforms? Etsy is set up for sales. Um, eBay, people are just looking. It's more like yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> people are looking for a super cheap deal there, and that's where I go to get super cheap deals. But um, when you're trying to, to make a profit, um, it, it, it's just not as good as Etsy for, for selling. That's a plan. Um, now, continuing in that vein, uh, do you think that Etsy has changed the way that people shop in general? Um, I know that there's been a trend in recent years, you know, like Cyber Monday, for instance, that online sales. Um, a lot of people with their busy lifestyles, they, they prefer to shop online. Um, how, how has Etsy kind of helped with that? Personally, I think Etsy has revolutionized how I shop. I can literally get anything on Etsy, and if I can't find it, I can request it. So pretty much if I can pick it up, somebody out there is going to make it for me, and I love that. So it's usually my go-to. Um, I actually have, 
taking the lazy way now with birthday cards. I will buy them on Etsy and have them sent directly to whoever the birthday is. Oh, that's that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. No, yeah. to this person. I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, yes, please. You <laughs> <laughs> sign my name for me, please. Right. Yes. Yes. So, Here's what it looks like. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> my dog's <laughs> just slap on the good. Right. From the dog, I don't care. So, so really, it has revolutionized how I've shopped. <laughs> but it's I like it. good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say the same. Um, like right now with the holiday shopping season, I don't really go to stores um, a lot. I usually try to buy all my my presents on Etsy. If I do have to go to a store, it's usually like a local boutique or something like that. Now, as far as the local boutiques, um, do you find that they are on Etsy? Also, um, or yeah, they? sometimes they are. Um, I actually. Whenever I was in undergrad, I took a um, intro to entrepreneurship uh, course, and part of our project was to make a business, and part of it was to find a location. And with Etsy, you don't have that cost, that overhead cost of rent, electricity, heat, all that other stuff. So, like, you're making more of a profit than having a uh, brick and mortar business. So I, I like that a lot better. Okay. Any thoughts on that one, Amanda? I would say it's the same thing. Um, it, 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 I'm a Pittsburgh junkie. Anything that says yins or is black and gold can usually be bought in, in my house. Like, if you walk through my house, you'll see many Pittsburgh vendors throughout it. Um, and so much to the last few Christmases, everything I've bought has been from markets or Etsy, just because I can find those... Pittsburgh um, local artists that are in those, like I Made It Market, Handmade Arcade, mm -hmm. all of those, and even the craft fairs and different things like that, I can find them in there just by searching their names. Or if I bought something off them last year, I still have their business card and I can go into Etsy and see what they have this year and, re and purchase it for something else. Um, it just helps in that. Like I couldn't get away for um, Small Business Saturday. I just couldn't get out there to like go to Wildcard or any of those boutiques to get the local things and Etsy is the great way that I can just search Pittsburgh and I can literally see all the local Pittsburgh artists so I think it's it's changed a lot of the way that you can now be an at-home um, entrepreneur almost because you can work your nine to five come home shut off the you know shut everything else off make your art put it up and sell you and I did a couple uh, craft shoes last year, and it was kind of a good way to get like your face out there. Mm -hmm. Like, if you wouldn't buy anything, just be like, at least take a card, and then like look later. Okay, because that, that was going to be another question that I was going to have for each of you is, you do the craft shows, you do the Etsy. Do they kind of tie in and play off of each other? I mean, obviously you have more available, I would think, through your Etsy shop than you might have with you in person, for instance. Mm -hmm. Is that the case? Uh, this year what I did is I actually held off on a few things, posting them, and then just kind of said like, hey, there's a few things here that you're not going to get on it, so you should come out. Um, and then once the, uh, the craft shows were done, I ended up posting them. Okay. So. And I think it's also what we said, with, that you said we could hand out the cards mm -hmm. and be like, I only brought three of these items here to this craft fair today. But if you go on my site, you can order five or six more and I'll have them to you by Christmas. Yeah. That happened a lot of times where mm -hmm. I would sell my table of whatever item that was. I sold all my inventory that day and they still wanted more. Um, so it's a good problem to have. Yeah, it yeah. was. <laughs> Plus you can only fit so much on a six foot table. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. So what are your thoughts on that, Karen? Because I know that you do some trade shows. And I do. Yes. yes. I found that... Um, I had a lot of custom requests who were like, this, can you get it in another color, another size, or I have this in mind, can you make something for me because I know you make this. And that really helps because um, they know that if it's at a craft show, it's going to make, and, and you can make anything else that, other than what's, what's available. Um, so I got a lot of custom requests that way, and, and I like custom requests because that helps, that helps me know what my customers want. Um, and it, it does. And um, so it gives me sometimes, sometimes my best sellers are come from custom requests. So um, that's been good for me that way. And of course the business cards get out there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. The only downside I found to it was the haggling. It got to be the last like half an hour of the show was open and people would come up and be like, hey, do you want to unload that instead of packing it up? Take $5 off. And that would be the only downside I saw to a couple of the shows that it was like, no, I'm still good. I can take it home and sell it. Like it was a little bit tougher to say things like that. Um, it, then it turned into something like the yard sailing type of thing mm -hmm. where it was the end of the day and there was haggling going on. And that was a negative side to it where you just kind of have to say no and say, I'll take it home. You know, I'll be fine. Yeah. It's like it's the end of this particular day, but mm -hmm. there's always tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, you know, with your Etsy stores in particular, uh, we're obviously working with, with the holiday Christmas season right around the corner. Um, are you guys running any sort of specials through your Etsy store or anything that, that people, you know, because a lot of different places, if, if you go to Retail America, they're like, oh, you know, coming up through holidays, you can, you know, buy one, get one type of thing. Do you tend to offer anything like that through your Etsy stores? Uh, yeah, right now I have 15% um, 15, 15 off everything yeah. I buy, so there's a coupon code in there. It's holiday, holiday 2016. I ran sales um, the entire Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business, Saturday weekend, because I get all those. <laughs> it's nice. Um, so I ran a big sale then. Um, it's a good weekend. Um, and since I have a, a, a mailing list, um, mm -hmm. and I send out coupons through there, or push some things um, and give a discount through there. And that way I know what comes in from my, my mailing list as well. But other than that, um, no, not really. I will launch my next, like the winter line, um, right before Christmas because sales slump then. People have all their mix ups, things bought. Okay. Um, so it'll regenerate sales at the end of December then. Okay. So yeah. you, you're smart about the marketing and you've seen the trends through obviously the, the online, which is, I would assume, a nice feature mm -hmm. for online sales versus other options. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, what is the most unique or interesting thing that you've seen on Etsy? I, I know you do a lot of shopping. <laughs> you can get anything on Etsy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, probably. I don't know what I've seen. A lot. A lot. They do not have a cancer can suck it shirt. I need to make one. You're into screen printing, you said? I need to make me one. <laughs> yeah, we, we both yeah. could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm about to sell my screen printing machine, but yes. Uh, yeah, yes, that's an odd one not being on there. Yes. I think that I would be on there. I thought so too. Maybe I overlooked it. I'm not sure how. Um, I'm trying to think what the weirdest thing I've seen. I can tell you the most interesting thing I've ever seen. Okay. Um, one of the times I did look up Pittsburgh on there, there is a couch length silhouette of the city skyline that is vinyl that you can shellac to your wall. Oh, nice. So it's a vinyl cutout of the downtown skyline that is a couch long. And it is the most coolest thing I've ever seen. It was, I was like, wow, if I actually- Why don't you have that? <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I'm like, that is totally my house. If yeah. I actually had an empty like space, that would be it. Um, so you know what to get a bed for Christmas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> an entire vinyl like skyline of it. And I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, but as far as weird, I, I see a lot of resellers now. That's that's the only downside is it, that bugs me as a shopper. Is I'll see somebody who went out and like bought it. They obviously didn't make it, and they are reselling it. That's uh, which is a common problem now um, with eBay and things like that. That they found it at a yard sale and they bought it, and then they're upselling it. Things like that. They that's the only thing I have seen. And I was like, you really didn't make that. Like. It's obviously trademarked with somebody else's things, and um, but nothing too weird like that I can even think of off the top of my head. Oh, maybe the steel. I did see Steelers high heels and or underwear, and that was a little bit disturbing to me. That I was like, who would buy that? So whenever you're out in the, <laughs> at a game and it's like three below zero and, uh, and you're in six and your um, yeah. I was like, I don't know if that's going to work um, <laughs> at all. I would say, I'm, I'm sure there's an audience for it, <laughs> not knocking the audience for it, but I thought that was kind of like, it made me do a double take. But. Yeah. yeah. Not weird, but I, bought, I actually bought these earrings on, on Etsy. Um, I have stretched ears, so I, I haven't 
ever since I've had them, I haven't worn dangly earrings. And I found a shop that has like a million of them. I bought these. And, I like them. That's yeah, cool. I'm going to probably buy more. So. Nice. Betsy's full of weird and wonderful. Mm -hmm. Run across tons of crazy. Of course, you can get it. That's a car stop. No. Um, so, what's the most interesting thing that you've sold on Etsy? And it could be, you know, I, I know it's certain things that you're doing, like you, you do, like at paraphernalia type of stuff. Yeah, back when I was selling shirts, um, a custom request. My sister had just got her daughter um, chickens for Easter. Oh my gosh, she loved these chickens. So for Christmas, she said, "Can you make an I love chickens shirt?" Oh my gosh, that was such a big seller. I'm like, this is the weirdest thing to me. <laughs> yeah, so that was the weirdest thing I've sold is I love chickens. I have then I sold 50 of those. Crazy. The um, the jewelry stands that I've been doing with the antique plates, mm -hmm. that's probably the most interesting thing. I actually, That was like a Pinterest find. I was like, oh, that looks easy. I could totally do that. Yeah, it was really cool. You, you've got one hanging out over here. Yeah. And cute. I love it. They're cute. Thanks. Um, my growler coasters. So I started making coasters out of six-pack um, cutouts, and the four-packs fit perfectly on a smaller tile. But when you get a six pack, it's a larger tile. So I actually bought a six by six tile to make these coasters, but I had no idea. Like, I'm like, do I sell this as a trivet? Like, what do I sell it as? And um, I literally uh, sold a, a ton at one of the craft shows. Oh, yeah, um, one woman came by and she bought all of the ones I had on my table and she actually was disappointed and had more. Um, but I ended up marketing it as a growler coaster so it was a conversation piece that you could put your growler on as you're serving beers so um that's my actual next thing if i do start this up again in january um i will actually be doing a whole pittsburgh based one i have nothing but um six packs from penn brewery and other yes. local breweries that will be going right onto these so they'll be growler coasters pittsburgh style so very cool um now we've we've kind of touched upon that each of you have have been doing the Etsy thing for different periods of time. So we have a the Etsy veteran over here who got on right as they, in their infancy. We've got Amanda who's been doing it a little bit more recently, and Amanda is not on who's it not on it anymore. Why? Can, can you talk about some of the the differences between then and now? with regard to the evolution of Etsy? Well, I think you hit it um, most, Amanda, you said um, the resellers. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the biggest differences. You just didn't have that when it started. It was handcrafted. Um, and there's a lot of competition out there now that there wasn't then, um, which is good and bad. Um, from a from buyer's standpoint, it's fantastic. From a seller's, it's a little less mm -hmm. so. Um, you've got to be cutting edge um, to be seen, to be to be noticed, um, and sometimes that's hard. Um, but it's, I think, I think it's morphed a lot. Um, it's changed. They offer a lot more right. to sellers, yeah. um, and, and I like that. Yeah. This is the SP panel. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hi. 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 Uh, come in and have a seat. Um, we're talking about some messy stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just to give you a basic intro. Uh, we've got Karen who's been doing Etsy for quite a bit of time. Uh, Amanda's also got an Etsy store that she's done for some time. And Amanda at the end there, she's she's done Etsy for, for a little bit and she's been gone for, for a little while. So we're just talking about how Etsy's changed over the the duration that it's been around. I think, okay. I think it's when they went public. That's what I noticed that on a, not to say that I'm going public and what I mean by the trading is um, yeah. when they went to uh, when they started publicly trading on Wall Street is when you really saw it because then no matter who you were you knew who they were it, it kind of was like this nice hidden secret that you could be on there and it was nice and quiet and like it, not too many people you could advertise you were on it you can market it um, when they started publicly trading and then it was in all the newspapers and everybody started talking about it, that's when it kind of like, you got everybody on it and it be almost became 
it's very tough to say this, but it's become another eBay to almost a certain degree. Um, you don't see quite as much junk as you see on eBay, only because they charge money for you to post. And I think eBay doesn't, so you kind of like, you start weeding that out where the person's like, well, I bought this at a yard sale for 50 cents, I'm upselling it for $10, however, I'm not gonna pay 20, 30 cents for it to be out there for a month on that site, when I can have it on the site for free. So it's kind of still okay, but at the same time, when it started to become publicly known, it it kind of like the quality became down, and then it became harder to be on there so much. Um, and then they changed uh, the website look over the years, which was a little tough. Um, and they would often change it without telling you. So you would yeah. go into your shop one day, and all of a sudden your banner didn't look right, you know, or something was hidden, or they're like you're like, where are my shops at, or where is my favorites list, or things like that. Yeah. And they would never ever warn you when they changed the site. So you're in there, and all of a sudden your banner doesn't look great, and your name's cut off, and this and that, and you're like, it just got to be too much. Um, uh, so that was. I agree. It is very, it's very oversaturated, and you have to kind of find something unique to sell, but you also have to make sure that people are actually looking for something like that. Um, I did do um, the paid advert, a little bit of the paid advertising. You can set like a budget, I think it's like up to $10 per day. I set it at one to see how it would do, and then I would go through the listings of like things that I knew, the keywords that I knew my listings were under, and it'd be like, with like, past page 20. Once I did like $2 a day, it was a little further up. So you just kind of have to know. It's like kind of similar to like Facebook ads. Kind of. Like you have yeah. To know how to market it yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a trial and error kind of thing. Which is fun because you were mentioning earlier that you think you cracked the code, Karen. <laughs> oh, probably the last of the three of us to figure it out. I had zero training in technical things. <laughs> the fact that I call them technical things tells you this. <laughs> It's been a struggle for me. SEO, all that, it's beyond me. So, yeah. I think marketing is, it's like any other business. You get out of it what you put into it. If you're willing to put in an hour or two every day or like four hours a week into your marketing, then you're going to see a return on it, like any business. I agree. Um, if you're only every once in a while mentioning it online or just handing out a business card here and there, you're not going to see a sale. I mean, that's when I decided to leave it was that I couldn't devote my time to that marketing and I couldn't devote my time to it. So therefore, despite me making totes and bins worth of everything, if I couldn't crack the idea of marketing, there was no point in any of those. Which kind of makes sense with any sort of any business. business that you're doing. Any business. Um, now, Amanda. <laughs> oh, jeez. You're you're the one that's not currently on it. Are you considering coming back to it? Um, I always consider it. I just it's so funny. I just had a conversation online the other day on how I've left the art world completely. I have not um, taken a photograph. I have not done graphic design. I have not done a painting in probably a good six to nine months now. Um, unless it has to pertain to bold, like I take pictures of food or, you know, whatever yeah. event I'm covering. Um, but to actually do anything artistic, it's probably been six to nine months. Um, I, as of right now, I have no interest to go back at all. I feel like I have ended that chapter in my life, and I want to consider just going in a new direction with my life. Um, but then there's every once in a while, like whenever I brought in my pieces today where I'm like, oh man, I got like four bins worth of stuff that never sold. And it was a cool idea. Maybe if you took a different direction in the marketing, maybe if you tried something new and tried again, it would be successful. It, I never know once New Year's comes and my life slows down again. Like, yeah, it may be something that I'm like, hey, look, throw up your photography again or put this back up and see how it goes. Or, you know, like I said, um, I have a stack of the six packs ready to go for growler coasters, like this thick, and they're all Pittsburgh-based. I mean, how wonderful would that line be? Mm -hmm. And 
if I just market it the right way and if I do it the right way, I can actually get it done and actually be successful at it. I mean, that goes through my mind like probably once every couple weeks. But then I go, yeah, you think about it next month. <laughs> I work too many hats right now. I work too many jobs. Just kind of let it go. Um, so, yeah, there's always that inkling like I know I can go back. Um, I still have my account. If you search for my store, it just says no items listed. Um, I still consider, I mean, I know you emailed me in the beginning of December and said, hey, do you want to do these shows with me this uh, this winter again? Like, and I kind of just was like, no, I'm good. Like, yeah. I can't, I couldn't fathom doing it again and either failing at it or in, in putting so much time into it. It was kind of my thing. So who knows what the future holds kind of thing. I'm always an entrepreneur with my tricks up my sleeve kind of thing, so. But it still has you kind of, kind of on the hook. Yeah, I think, and that's what I also told the person I discussed it with last week is that it, it is something that when the rest of your life slows down, you know it's always there that you can pick it up and easily try it again. It. Okay. Um, I can try being a graphic designer again. I can try being a photographer again. I can do paintings again. I, those are skills that I'll never ever lose. Mm -hmm. It's just, do I really want to invest time into it again? That's kind of the only okay. question. But again, it's like any business, you get out of it what you put into it. So if, if I was to do it, I would take a different direction this time and see if that fails and then try a different way and then try a different way. So. All right. Um, now, Karen, talking about different options, you've had two different Etsy stores. You've had the, the Rocking Pony and now the French Dog. Can you talk about some of the difference between the two and knowing that obviously the, the Rocking Pony's shop was was when you first started it, and now you've learned some different things. Uh, we were talking earlier, I think the Rocky Pony just got lucky because it was so early on when Etsy was brand new, um, and there was so little competition. I got established from the start, um, and that, that helped. I had a customer base that was pretty loyal, um, and that, that kept me going through the years, and it was just a hobby. I sold shirts enough to feed my Starbucks addiction. <laughs> it was nice. Um, and keep me busy. I, I actually started it, I homeschooled the kids for a while, and I started it when the kids went to, to school because I'm bored. Um, I needed something to do, so it just gave me something to do. The French dog has been different. We're in a different life stage. Um, I actually need a second income. We've got three kids in college now, so, so an extra income is handy to have. Um, so it's a business this time. It's okay. not a home. And I, the marketing is huge. Um, I spend I, this this entire year, 2016. I, I'm learning to market effectively. Um, I started out every minute of every day marketing, and realized um, midsummer that I don't have me time. I don't have family time. This isn't cool. Um, so I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning to pace myself. I'm learning to be effective in my marketing. Um, but it's it is you get out of it what you put into it. Um, and it's, it's been a business this time. It's, it's been different for me that way. But it is, it's, it's a lot of work um, to make it successful. Because you can put things up and hope for the best, mm -hmm. or you can sell them. Okay. Kind of like the, the chicken shirt that you totally didn't think would take right. off, but completely right. did. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, there are small niches like that. And okay. I think uniqueness sells well on Etsy. Okay. That's what people go there for. And with all the new platforms and all the new additions onto each social, it's kind of tough. I know one of my favorite Etsy stores just started with Instagram stories last week where she, or a few weeks ago, where she shows how she's making it, like in her home as an Instagram, or in her workshop as an Instagram story. So you're actually able to see what she's about to put out or what she's putting into the next shop or something like that and it kind of hooks you in and you're like oh that's a cute piece I know that she's gonna put that in Etsy or it's gonna be at her next market and great I'll keep an eye on it and like that's with that much changing in marketing you have to be on top of it or else you you know absolutely like, like you just said you find that approach that's a little bit different than the person who's running a similar shop and it's kind of what brings back in Okay. Well, I think I've got one more question over here, and it's kind of a, a fun flux question. Uh, if I wanted to start my own Etsy shop, 
what would be the advice that you would offer me? Do you want to say it early? <laughs> <laughs> um, so if so if you are a seller now, um, you can actually sense if like since you are interested, I can send you a link. We can both get four, 40 free listings. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I found that through the band. Oh, so, back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, it has to be a new store. Yeah. <laughs> but my advice would be don't don't give up. <laughs> I love her. She is like my personal cheerleader. Anytime I'm frustrated, I call Amanda. I'm not frustrated. She's like, stop it. Stop you two are my personal cheerleaders. Yeah. You really are. Um, the only advice I have, and the thing that I picked up was, and I brought the copy of the book with me. It was called the um, the Handmade Marketplace. Mm -hmm. It is a book this thick, and it's about this square. It's blue. It's adorable, and um, it will teach you everything. And it's old. I mean, I bought it probably 2007, 2008. So some of the stuff is a little outdated, but it talks how to do a photo shoot, marketing how to list an Etsy, everything. Some of the stuff might be outdated, but it's definitely what I read before I even started. And I don't even know who told me about it. it I, it's so long now that it's sat on my bookshelf that it's, but it's still my go-to when I have a question about Etsy or I have a question like, how should I shoot this, market it, anything like that. It kind of just gave that bare bones kind of thing. I, I mean, so that was a great book. That's okay. what I say. I'm, I'm famous for Googling things. Um, I can find everything that way. Um, YouTube has been good for me um, to help me with marketing or, or photography or whatnot. Um, I've been listening to a lot of webinars on how to sell on Etsy. Um, okay. Renee Christine, I think her name is, has been phenomenal. Um, she has, has had an Etsy store. She opened her own shop from there, but six-figure income. Oh, wow. So she knows what she's doing, and she sold the business and started a second six-figure income selling on Etsy. Um, so she knows what she's doing, and she shares information for free on webinars. So with, that's fabulous um, research, research to figure out what you need to do. Yeah. And I know Etsy, they, uh, they put out a lot of articles. They tend to like help they, you. They are very helpful yeah. with the self-help. Yeah, they are. It's One of the things I picked up, um, it says don't skip on your photography. That's how people like people exactly. don't have it in their hand, so they want to know what it looks like. So they need to right exactly. They yeah. need to see accurate colors. So right. filters are not good. No. Um, yeah. They need to see what it feels like, mm -hmm. and you have to convey things like that yeah. in photography. Um, yeah. You have to set good. a scene. You have to stage the photograph yeah. too. That's their biggest thing they talk about is don't just yeah. like put it there with a white background. Like actually put it on a model or like something right. like that is one right. of the biggest yeah. things. Um, I would also say, uh, especially in Pittsburgh here, um, there's so many Etsy artists, mm -hmm. and it's such you know, everybody knows everybody else. Everybody knows that Pittsburgh is like this small. So um, just reach out to a person that's on there. I know I reached out to a few of them uh, more recently in the past few years and kind of heard their success stories and what made them successful. Um, and then kind of like took their ideas and also said, oh, I could probably work on that too a little bit, or saw how, saw how they did their marketing or saw something like that. Right. And um, they were more than happy to share their tips or their success stories, so. Awesome. Well, we did ask you guys to bring some samples of some of your work, so I'm gonna go ahead and have you kind of do a, a quick little demo model show over here to, oh, okay. to kind of market some of your stuff to our, our cameraman over there, Sor, and the internet. So, if you'd like to follow me over your tables. Yes. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about what you brought with you and where we can find you. Um. Well, currently, I don't have anything up except for my photography is at amandanarcissi.com. So we have everything from um, photo prints to about uh, things in Pittsburgh. Um, so, oh, which is really cool because I actually have some really great shots of Knit the Bridge, which isn't around anymore. 
So if you're looking for really cool pictures or you have a friend that's a knitter, I, I give these out for Christmas presents actually to people who are knit and crochet because I always think it's one of the coolest projects. And then I also have my upcycle art, like I mentioned, um, coasters and growler coasters that um, you can put your beers on in the summertime. And then also little flowers and chalkboards and then jewelry boxes that were made actually with Pittsburgh photographs too. And these are made out of old cigar boxes, so they actually still smell like cigars. And um, so everything was upcycled. These were things that would be normally thrown in the trash that got turned into something useful. I have dog collars. We have dogs. Um, that's my new thing. Pretty basic. I don't have a dog to model. I was told I should have brought them. Just the we, we wouldn't have done a panel. No. <laughs> They're adjustable, which is nice because then you don't have to worry about what the exact fit is for your dog. Um, and of course, we make leashes to match. And um, we have some bow ties to match too because bow ties are all the rage. <laughs> Super cute. <laughs> what, what's the name of your shop again? The French Dog, sorry. French Dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a few things here. Uh, this is the uh, jewelry, cookie, whatever you want to put on its stand, uh, made out of antique plates and teacups. And I've been doing these, uh, these fun little zipper pouches. Uh, they're all lined. They have zipper pulls on them. Um, I've been marketing them as makeup bags, but you can put pretty much anything in them. Um, I know a lot of people, um, like my friends and other people I know, they've been, like, you know, they say, like, oh, I have so many zipper bags that I put my makeup in. So I just, it's a need that people, you know, have, so been going doing that I have so much fabric at home I said hey you know what I'll give it to you. Exactly. And you can find those at ABC Designs on Etsy. Awesome. Well thank you very much panelists for coming in and talking about uh, Etsy.